all, I welcome all the participants to this room. Uh, today, uh, I'll be teaching what is uh, project planning, scheduling, and monitoring. So this is in continuation with the last session, whatever I have uh, thought, right? So that was about the risk management and the project, different phases of this project life cycle, right? So if possible, please remember the things, whatever I have thought in the previous sessions. What is project life cycles and uh, what is uh, what are the different stages of project life cycles, right? So that was thought in one uh, session and the project risk management. What is risk? What are the unforeseen risks and how to mitigate this risk? Right, so that I have told you in the second session. Right? In the third session, it's all about the project planning, scheduling, and monitoring. Where in today's session, right, so I'll be concentrating more on the project planning. Right, so what is project planning? Uh, why we need to plan the project? Uh, what are the benefits of planning a project? And what are the different uh, approaches we have for planning a project so first we will start with what is project planning project planning is a disciplined uh, addressing how to complete a project in a certain time frame usually with defined stages and dis designated resources you may ask uh, what what if uh, the project is taken without uh, doing proper planning here Planning a project is considered as a very, very important stage where we can consider what are all the things which may affect our project. Here, for an example, I can consider the construction of a building. For constructing a building, we need to have a sound plan Good afternoon. for managing the materials and, and confirm. the machines. So how best we can make use of the available resources, right? So that can be done with the help of planning. If we don't have a proper planning, it may result ending up the wastage of the manpower and the wastage of the machineries. That is the reason why we need to have a proper planning. Here, the definition of planning is the project planning is a discipline addressing how to complete a project. That is, what should be the start date of a project and what is the tentative date of the completion of a project? Say, for example, if I am taking a construction of a building, today's date, in August, I am going to commence the building. And what is the probable date that I am going to finish the completion of a building? It may be four months or six months. During this span of four months or six months, right? So, what are all my priorities in the construction? At what work I have to take at what time? Right. So that is what called as a planning. Right. It is applicable for almost all fields. So, as I have given some examples of construction of a building, it is applicable for the construction of the bridges or even it is applicable for the development of apps as well. So if you want to develop some applications, uh, what is the target date at which you are going to finish the completion, right? So what is the starting date in between? What are all the different stages and what is the corresponding time for the completion of that stage, right? That we need to plan properly, right? So what is the starting date? What is the target end date? in between, right? So how our progress should be, right? So it can be monitored easily only if we have a proper plan in place. That is what the basic definition of this project planning. Next, objectives. So here you need to understand why we have to go with the project planning. Here, there are some objectives for this project planning that is to arrange the activities appropriately to make the realistic time scheduling. Third one is to make a resources estimation and planning. Fourth objective here is to implement time and cost controlling. Fifth one is to ease the contract administration. I will try to explain one by one. First, I will go with the first objective of the planning. That is 
to arrange the activities properly or to arrange the activities appropriately. If I consider any project, right, so it will be involving many activities or the many stages, I can say. So which stage has to taken up first and which stage has to taken next? So in a construction of a building, for example, there are different steps involved in the construction of a building. So which one I have to take first, which one I have to take next? That is nothing but prioritizing the activities. Prioritizing, once we are able to give priority for the activities, then only I can arrange this in a proper manner. That means which one I have to take first and which we take I have to next. So if I want to arrange this in order, right? So I need to know, so how this is going to function, right? So if I want to know how this is going to function, right? So I need to have a proper plan. So that is the reason why we need to have a proper planning. This is to arrange the activities by prioritizing it in a manner. That is what the first objective of this planning. And the second objective here is to make a realistic time scheduling. Realistic time scheduling means, as I told you earlier, what is the probable date of the completion? So this can be further split. Say, for example, if a project takes six months for the completion, this six months can be further split into different times. That is weekly. Weekly, we can split this. Right. So week one, week two, week three, likewise. Right. So uh, six months, it is always uh, uh, 24 weeks. Right. So that is we can have a proper plan in place. Once we have a proper plan, so we can have a, this scheduling. Right. So this scheduling will be telling you. Right. So what is the probable date of completion of our project? Right. So without planning the activities, right? So if you try to schedule, right, so it is not possible, right? So which work has to take up first? What is the time required for that work to be completed, right? So if we add all these small chunk of works, finally we will be with the total time required for the completion of our project. So that is what the second objective of the planning, project planning. Third objective here is to make a resources estimation and planning. For any project, we need the resources. Right? So for some project, it, it requires materials, it requires machines, and it requires men. Right? So here, we need to have the estimation of this. For the project to be completed, how many number of men are required, how many machines are required, and how much quantity of materials are required. Right. So this is possible only with a proper plan. Right. So what stage we are in. Right. So what is the next stage for the completion of a next stage. Right. So what are all the resources required. So it is not possible for all the projects to accumulate all the resources which is required for the completion. If it, it is only possible to achieve stage by stage. Right. So what is the next stage. For the completion of next stage, what is the resources required, right? So it may be in terms of men, it may be in terms of materials, or it may be in terms of machineries, right? So this can achieved only with the having proper plan, right? So if we have a proper plan, then only we can achieve the estimation of the resources required for the completion of a particular project. The fourth objective of project planning is to implement time and cost controlling. As I told you in the earlier session, so the project will go into loss, right? So why it go into loss? It is because of the improper controlling. If you are not able to control the cost and if you are not able to control the time, right? So obviously the project will end up making some losses. That is the reason why we need to have a proper control over the time and cost, right? So how to exercise this, right? So how to control this time and cost? It's, it is possible only with the help of proper planning, right? So if we have a proper planning, like, so in the next six months, we need to complete the whole printing project. 
right so in the first week right so what are all the things i need to complete and this monitoring it is possible only when we have a proper planning right so if i consider right so what is the work to be completed in week 1 right so if i have a proper plan if it is achieved or not right so that i'm going to check right so if it is achieved as per our plan then there is no question of time and the cost delays right so there is no time delay and there is no additional cost which is required for the completion of project right so to exercise control over this right so we need to have a proper plan right so that is what the fourth objective and the fifth objective of project uh, planning is to ease the contract administration right so there are different parties which are involved in the particular project right so one will be the client right so another will be the person who has handed over a project to this client right so that is engineers are involved right so uh, builders are involved next the parties are involved right so there are different persons who are going to involved in a particular project right so to have a smooth communication between them and to have a ease of administration we need to have a proper plan right so that should be convincible to the clients right so it should be convincing to the clients right so we need to have a proper plan right so this is to convince the clients right so this is our project and this project this is the tentative date of a completion right so in between right so this should be our progress right so it is very useful to convince the clients that is the reason why we need to have a proper plan in place before taking up any project this is why uh, we need to set some objectives right so the objectives would be like this and with a proper objectives we can achieve the project right so that is successfulness of a project it is because of the objectives and goals whatever we have set in the initial stages next need for project planning again you can ask uh, what is the need of planning this project what if it is not done right so these are some of the justification i can give for having a project planning before taking up any project the first reason here is it boosts project performance and success rates so here whenever we are taking up any project right so we need to have a proper project plan right so this plan will be helping to complete the work in time right so to complete the work within the estimated budget so if we don't have a proper plan right so if we are not uh, recording all the events which is taking place in a site right so how much time it is going to take right so how much cost which is involved in the different projects right so it is not possible with us to monitor right so that is the reason why to improve the performance of a project to improve the probability of success of a project we need to have a proper plan in place that is the first reason we need to have a proper planning before taking up any project and it saves money right so how it saves money right so for monitoring the project progress right so we need to have a plan right so if we are capable of managing the project right so managing the project means monitoring right so if you are capable of monitoring the project right so automatically it will help in where we are lagging and what are the different steps we can take for mitigating those things and finally to end up the project with some profits that is how it can save money and the third reason to have a project planning is it improves team communication right so once we have laid a proper plan so automatically we can arrive who are all the persons who has to involve in executing the things that is if different works are involved in a particular project right so again i will be taking the construction of a residential building here example so in a construction of residential building right so there is a involvement of architects there is a involvement of engineers that is civil engineers there is a involvement of electrical engineers like this right so so many people are involved in executing a particular project right so here once we have a proper plan right so like so which work i have to take first which work i have to take next then automatically it will help 
the communication between the different teams who are involved in the construction of a particular project right so say for example if the masonry work or the uh, roofs and say for example roofs and the walls are constructed so then there is a scope for electrical engineers for their work right so immediately right so they will get informed and they will start their work right so likewise right so there will be a contribution of architects there will be a contribution of civil engineers there will be a contribution of electrical engineers for executing a particular projects right so this when you have a proper plan right so it will be very easy for the communication between the different persons who are involved in a particular project right so that is what uh, we need to have a proper planning and the fourth reason is it ensures the best use of resources right so when we have a proper plan right so automatically it will be helping us in utilizing the proper resources right so this resources it can be in terms of men it can be in terms of machineries or it can be in terms of men materials and machineries right so all these things right so that is the effective utilization of uh, the resources right so it requires a planning right so to give an example i can consider imagine uh, i have a 12 number of trucks i have 12 number of trucks right so if 12 number of trucks is involved in a particular project without anything planned without any planning right so we don't have any control over them right so how many trucks are working how many trucks are simply uh, standing over there right so we don't have any control over the number of trucks which are getting involved in a particular project right so if i have a proper plan say for example right so four number of trucks right so this is to be involved in taking the soil if that is to borrow the soil right so remaining four number of trucks right so this has to bring the aggregates or whatever the coarse aggregates or fine aggregates right so remaining four number of trucks right so here these trucks are responsible for bringing the cement to the site particularly right so if we are employing a particular job to this trucks right so automatically we can have a control over the resources right so we are not allowing any trucks or we are not allowing any men or machineries idle right so that is what the effective utilization of resources it can be achieved only through a proper planning right so that is what it ensures the best use of resources and the next point here is it makes it easy to track project goals and outcomes right so once we are fixing some goals right so once we are fixing some objectives the plan will help us to reach the goals and objectives of a particular project right so that is a definition of this and the last here is it helps keep all collaborators aligned right so that is as i earlier explained as there is a good communication between the different parties involved in a particular project automatically the project will go smoothly right so this will also in the same line right so that is it helps all the collaborators collaborators mean different parties who are involved in the project right so aligned aligned means moving in a same direction right so that is what another uh, advantage of having a proper project plan and the last one is it improves the employees retention right so a particular employee say for example right so 10 number of workers are assigned with a particular work right so we can have a control over them we can monitor them and they are specified and they have to work for a particular reason right so in a particular project they have to work for a particular reason right so when everything is planned right so automatically there will not be any exchange of blames between the different uh, parties who have involved and everything will go smooth right so that is the reason why it is beneficial for the employees as well right so in that way it improves the employee retention in a particular form right so this is why we need to have a proper planning next is the stages right so what are the different stages in a project planning so here the first stage is determine the project goals and objectives right so why we are taking this project what are the goals we can achieve by completing this projects right so that we need to define properly before starting the project that is determining the project goals and objectives 
right so what are all the objectives we need to lay down first before taking up any project right so if we have to be planning in a particular way that is a sound planning what i call right so it consists of the goals and objectives to be achieved and the second stage here is to determine the project scope right so what is the scope of a particular project right so this is to be defined properly right so it may be anything right so that is if i consider the construction of a railway line between two terminals right so we need to have a proper justification for uh, the work to be taken up right so if you consider any project right so certainly it will be involving much cost right so several crores are to be invested in executing a particular projects right so we cannot simply uh, involved in such projects which requires thousands of crores right so 1000 crores 500 crores right so we need to define this properly right so what are all the advantages we can get after completion of this projects right so once this is defined properly right so then we will go for the economic justification right so economic justification means if we if i am expending this 1000 crores or 500 crores for a particular project right so whether it is justifiable or not right so once it is proved to be justifiable right so then only we can go with the uh, further proceedings with the project right so that is why we need to have proper goals and objectives which we need to set before the taking up of any projects right so that is what defining the project goals objectives and scope and the next stage of project planning is build your work breakdown structure, right? So work breakdown structure means if I consider a one project that is a building, again, the construction of a building. So you can uh, break down this, right? So different stages which is involved in the construction of a building, right? So simply I can consider I am dividing this into... <coughs> Sorry, different that is foundation work, right? So I'll be keeping it isolating this. Next is the construction of walls, right? So that is the second one. And the third stage here is the construction of a roofs, right? So fourth stage is the interior finishing, right? So electrification and interior finishing, right? So I'm breaking down this structure, right? So I am dividing the whole project into different structures, right? So that is a small structures, right? So why we have to do this, it is again very important. So as a whole project, right, so we cannot be able to monitor or control, right. So if we are dividing this into discrete sections, it is very easy to follow, right. So once it is very easy to follow, automatically we can monitor the things, what is happening and where we are delaying, right. So that is... Um, which stage is delaying and how to improve this, right? So to have answers for all these questions, right? So it is essential to divide the whole project into small works, right? So that process is called as the work breakdown structure or the work breakdown structures, right? So that is to be included in the project planning. <clears throat> Next is to set the timelines, right? So as I told you, it's a whole building for an example, if I am dividing it into four stages, one is the foundation, second one is the construction of walls, right? So third stage is the construction of roofs, fourth stage is electrification and finishing, right? So this is my breakdown, right? So this is my work breakdown structure, right? So I am dividing the whole project into four segments, right? So set timelines means, right? So what is the time required for completing each stage? Right. So how much time is required for the completion of foundation? How much time is required for the construction of the walls? How much time is required for the roof? And how much time is required for the electrification and interior finishing? Right. So here we are going to assign what is the time required for the completion of each stage of our work. 
right so this should be clear when <clears throat> then only we can call it as a proper project planning right so why we require this planning right so that i already told you right so to have a proper controlling right so to monitor the project to monitor the phase of a project right so monitoring the phase means right so if if you are planning to construct a particular building in six months right so in what phase we are moving right so whether <clears throat> it is possible to achieve within the specified time or not right so this is a possible only with proper planning right so that is what <clears throat> this uh, stages of project planning is all about the next thing is uh, the determine the planned resources right so in continuation with the previous steps right so that is uh, setting timelines next is determine and plan resources right so again planning resources i already given some examples right so this is to plan the machines man and materials right so we need to have a proper plan right so next is estimating the costs right so what is the total cost which is required right so that is based on <clears throat> what is the cost of materials what is the cost of labors and what is the cost of machines right so which is involved in a particular project right so if you want to know each of this you need to have a proper planning right so that is why <clears throat> this is also considered as an important step in the project planning right so estimating the total or overall cost of a particular project right so next stage here is determining the risk and constraints right so if we are starting any project right so there are some uncertainties right so which may pose some risk and constraints right so what are all the risks which are about to come right so if once we have a proper idea that uh, what are all the possible risks we are going to face automatically we will get prepared and we can easily mitigate the risks right so that is why right so this is also considered as one of the step in a project planning right so what are the say for example if you are uh, considering uh, constructing any project right so some unforeseen circumstances will come and which, which may affect your program right so that is the reason why right so you need to give proper space for addressing the risks and constraints right so which will be coming right so that is what uh, this stage is all about and the next stage of project planning is plan out communications right so this is also very important i can say if there is no communication between the different parties involved in a construction right so automatically the work will get delayed right so <clears throat> in any project right so there will be some hierarchies right so if a proper communication if a proper communication is there between the different purpose different people who are working at the different levels then automatically the project will be a successful one and there is no question of delay or hindrance to the projects right so if there is a lack of communication right so if there is a lack of communication means say for example if there is a proper communication between the engineer and labor who are working in a particular site automatically the work will be very smooth and it will get completed within a stipulated time right so if there is no communication between these two persons automatically what happens the labor will be committing some kind of a mistakes and to correct that mistake automatically some time will get elapsed this will be hindering the completion of a project right so that is why we need to have a proper communication between the different persons involved in the different stages for the completion of our project right so the next stage here is to make plans for quality control and assurance right so if i consider any project right so the last part here is the quality control right so if i consider developing a mobile app right so you are involving in a development of a mobile app right so after the completion of your project right so that is to be checked right so that is the quality control right so whether the app is serving the purpose for which it has developed or not right so this we need to check or if any bugs are there right so we need to fix that bugs right so that is very important here so in a construction project if i consider right so make plans for quality control means what is the quality of work they have 
done whether it is satisfactory or not right so if not what we can do right there are certain steps we can evolve during the construction and some quality control right so which is after the construction right so that we have to plan right so this is also considered as one of the important step in a project planning right the next thing here is the tools for project planning so as i told you uh, project planning is very important for the proper execution of a particular project without any delays or <clears throat> to achieve maximum profits so here we have a certain tools for executing this that is a project planning right so mainly we have this critical path method and the second one is pert that is about uh, the program evaluation and review technique pert chart we call and the third tool we have is the work breakdown structure fourth one is the project documentation and the fifth one is the gantt chart right so majorly we are using the critical path method and pert in majority of the projects for project planning we have the cpm and pert and here i'll also be concentrating on the cpm and pert right so what is this critical path method and what is the program evaluation and review technique and we will also see what is the difference between this cpm and pert first right so we will start with the critical path method right so you need to understand we are dealing with the project planning right so this critical path method is a tool which is used for the project management or the project planning right so a critical path in a project management is the longest sequence of activities that must be finished on time in order for the entire project to be completed any delays in the critical tasks will delay the rest of our project right so it is very easy to understand so if you are planning certain project if it takes 6 months if it takes 6 months for its completion right so then you need to break down this right so what are all the different steps involved in a particular projects you are going to divide this into sub units and you are assigning the particular timelines for each of this segments right so say for example right so you are dividing the whole project into 10 parts right so whole projects you are dividing it into 10 parts and each part requires one week for its completion right so we can easy we can be easily monitoring all these things right so what is the first task right so the first task is to be completed within the first week of the initiation right so if i am starting my project today right so by next week right so this part of the work is to be completed right so after this right so by the next week right so this part of work is to be completed right so this breakdown whether we are achieving the project completion within a proper phase or not you will get this idea only with this one right so that is splitting the project into different segments and assigning the timeline for this project right so what is the time required for the completion of these segments right so here <clears throat> that is what written here right so that is a sequence of activities that must be finished on time in order for the entire project to be completed right so what i mean here is very simple so if a particular work right so if you are assigning one week for a particular work if you are not able to complete that work in one week if it is taking two weeks for its completion automatically the whole project will get delayed <clears throat> the whole project will get delayed right so similarly the other works right so you are assigning a particular timeline for that and if you are not capable of completing that in a particular time assigned automatically the whole project will get delayed right so here we are trying to control right so that is the proper execution of a particular work within the stipulated time right so if we are giving <clears throat> one week for a completion of a particular project so on a daily basis we are going to check whether we are achieving this phase or not 
right so if not we will include extra time that is over time then we will try to achieve the uh, completion of a particular stage within that week right so if we are able to achieve this right so that is week by week right so that is what is the progress we have to be make uh, for this week right so what, what progress we have to show for next week right so if you are capable of uh, <clears throat> executing the things right so on a weekly basis automatically you will be completing the project within the period of six months or what eight months whatever you have planned right so that can be achieved using this critical path method right so i will just show you right so uh, how to find how we are going to find this critical path right here the critical path means uh, the total time i can say right so for this context right so how we are going to find this right so the first step here is list project tasks and details right so that is uh, if i consider any project you can divide that project into different subheadings right so that is what the project tasks right so here what are all the tasks you need to complete <coughs> to finish the particular project that is to be listed first And the second stage here is <clears throat> identify task dependencies for the project, right? So here, if I consider a particular project, all works are not that important, right? So there are some particular works, right? So which is to be completed uh, within the stipulated time, right? So other works, right? So there are uh, some other works which we can delay, right? So say for example, uh, so there is no work for the electrical engineers, right? So once the, uh, you, you are not uh, building this building properly, that is uh, the walls and the roofs, if you are not completing in time, right? So the electrical engineers will not be <coughs> <coughs> sorry. So the job of electricians the job of electrical engineers will come into play only after the construction of these walls and roofs. So if you are not uh, completing the construction of the wall and roof within a particular time, <clears throat> automatically what happens? Everything will get delayed, right? So here the priority is to be given for some work, right? So that is this work, if you are uh, giving some priority, so once this work is over, automatically the other persons, the electrical engineers and electrical workers, they will be <clears throat> sorry. <clears throat> so they will not get hindered. They will be doing their work, right? So in the place, right? So if we have some other work, right? So where the dependency is not there, say for example, there are certain works, right? So that is uh, uh, the backfilling of soil. Say, for example, if you are excavating the earth, you need to backfill it with the soil, right? So for that, there is no dependency of other workers, right? So in that case, right, so that can be delayed or that can be shifted, right? So it will not cause any harm to the delaying of a project, right? So that is the reason why we need to able, uh, we need to identify what is the task and what is the dependency of a different stages of a project, right? So next, the third year is create a network diagram of tasks, right? So what are all the different tasks we have listed? We need to create a network of this. I will just show you uh, what how this network will look like, right? So next is the estimating each task duration, right? So as I told you, right? So if it requires <clears throat> uh, six months, right? So we need to break it down to different stages, right? So estimating each task duration means, right? So the first stage is the foundation construction. One month, we are keeping it for the foundation construction, two months for the construction of building and remaining one month, it is for the electrification and finishing, right? So this is how I'm going to arrange this task, right? So the task duration for the different works, right? So this we need to estimate, <clears throat> that is also there. And the fifth stage here is find the critical path based on the longest segments. Right. So what are all the works I have to do? Right. So how this sequence should be. Right. So which work I have to consider first. Right. So which work I have to consider next. 
right so that is what uh, the longest sequence of the critical path i will just show you this and the last one is calculate the total float right so i will show you with the help of this diagram <clears throat> you can see here right so if i consider one project right so between the start and the finish right so there are different uh, ways here right so that is task a is there task b is there task c task d task e and task f right so what is this task a right so what is task b task c right so this you need to define right so that is what we call it as a breakdown <clears throat> we need to define the particular tasks here right so then we need to arrange this in sequence right so which one i have to consider first which one i have to consider next right so for example if i consider right so we have three uh, <clears throat> what we call ways of finishing the project right so that is right so one way is start then task b task c and finish right so it will be requiring seven days for the completion of this project right so if we are following this way right so next so if i consider the second way here right so it is task a and directly it is finish right so it requires three days and if i go for the third option right so first is to go for task a it requires three days next to the task b it requires two days next is four days task e and to complete task f it requires one day right so if you put it all together it requires uh, 10 days for the completion of a project right so here we are trying to identify what is the critical path right so in which way we have to follow so that we can complete the project earlier right so this can be understood easily i will let you know later <clears throat> what is this how the cpm or the critical path method works right i will go into this part <clears throat> so these two things are connected right so that is both these tools are used for the project management and the part refers to the program evaluation review technique right so again it is a project management or the project planning tool which which is used to calculate the amount of time it will take to realistically finish a project right so as i told you in the previous slide so if we are following particular approach right so what is the total time it consumes right so between the start and the finish of a project right so once again in pert also it will be giving you an idea of calculating the total amount of time which is required to finish a particular project right so here the pert charts are used to plan tasks within a project right so we are breaking down different stages which is involved in the project and we are assigning the timeline for the completion of this project right so that is what we are doing in the pert right so this is also a approach <clears throat> which is used uh, in almost all projects right so this is to monitor what is the phase with which the project is going on right so whether we are capable of achieving the completion of a project within a time right so everything you will come to know using this pert and this will also help in scheduling right so what work we have to do right so how we have to execute this right so everything and it will also help the coordination between the different teams involved in the project right so that is also required right so proper planning will be having a proper coordination between the different persons who are involved in a particular project right so this part will help in achieving <clears throat> the good communication between the different entities who are involved in a particular project next you can see here right so this is showing uh, what is the tasks what are the different tasks we have and uh, the start and finish <clears throat> and there is a time stamp over there you can just see right so starting to task 1 right so it requires one day task 1 to task 2 it requires 3 days task 2 to finish it requires another 2 days right so starting to task 3 it requires 1 days task 3 to finish it requires 6 days right so next starting to task 4 it requires 2 days 4 to 5 it requires 1 day 5 to 6 uh, 5 to finish it requires 
additional two days right so here this will be showing in between the start and finish right so what are all the different approaches we can have and what are all the time requirement by the different approaches right so if i go with approach like start one to finish totally it will be consuming six days between the start and the finish <clears throat> and the second approach here is the start task three and finish if you are following this approach uh, put together it will be taking seven days for the completion that is a start to task three it requires one day and task three to finish it requires six days put together it requires seven days for the completion of a task and if you are following start task three task four task five finish this path it will be taking you two plus one three three plus one four four plus two six right so totally it requires six days for the finish right so that is it will be giving you right so <clears throat> what is the time required if you are following different approaches right so for approach one it will be taking you uh, how many three to six five six days right so approach two will be consuming seven days approach three will be consuming six days again right so which one i have to follow right so here this part that is a program evaluation and review technique will give you a clear idea about which activity is to take up right so which activity is to be take up in such a way that right so we need to achieve the finish line in a stipulated time right so that is what this part is all about right so now uh, we will just have a quick comparison between the PERT and CPM, right? So both are used for the project management tools or the project planning tools, right? So this comparison will give you an idea of, right? So how the CPM and the PERT works, right? So the first is about the expansion of this PERT and CPM. Uh, PERT refers to project evaluation and review technique, right? So in your multiple choice question, right? So they may ask this, right? So PERT and CPM. Right. So what is CPM and PERT? They may ask this. That is the program evaluation and the project evaluation and review technique. And CPM refers to critical path method. Right. So next, uh, the second comparison here between PERT and CPM is it is an event oriented one. Right. So PERT is an event oriented and CPM is an activity oriented technique. Right. So there is a difference between the event and the activity right so cpm follows this activity oriented rule <coughs> part follows this uh, event oriented technique right so in part it manages unpredictable activities right so cpm manages the predictable activities right so predictable and unpredictable means say for example uh, if you are planning some project right so you can be able to identify what are all the risks which are going to hit Right. So in the six months for the completion of a project, what are the risks which are about to come? Right. So there are some risks which you cannot be able to predict. Right. So some unforeseen circumstances we can call. Right. So unforeseen circumstances means which we cannot predict. Right. So here this CPM, right, so it manages. Right. So it is capable of managing the risks which you have considered at the initial stages. Right. So but in case of PERTs, right, so if any incident happens, right, so this PERT is capable of managing this unpredictable activities which were not planned initially, right. So it will be very easy to manage the project with the PERT, right, so if we have more uh, unforeseen circumstances like this, right. So that is what uh, the second uh, comparison between this and the next comparison is it is focused on the time control and CPM is mainly about the cost optimization, right? So here, there are two aspects for a project. As I told you earlier, right? So one is the cost perspective and another one is a time perspective, right? So I can say both are important for the successful completion of our project, right? So if you are completing the project in time, right? So if you are not capable of uh, sticking to the schedule, Right, so offer rates, whatever you have planned, then also it is a failed project, right? So if you are not capable of making any profits out of the project, then it is not a successful project. And though you are making project, if the project is not finished within a 
the scheduled time right so once again it is called as a fail right so here we need to understand this time and cost both are important but if you are preferring more time over the cost right so then pert will be the best option for project planning and if you prefer uh, cost optimization and if you are if you are compromising on the time then cpm will be your choice right so and next one is uh, the development year right so 1958 pert is developed 1957 cpm is developed and it is a three time estimate it is a single time estimate right so estimate means right so how much it is going to cost right so that we need to know first before uh, executing the things right so that is pert is more accurate over cpm right so in estimating the things in estimating the cost and in estimating the timeline for different projects right so this seems to be more comfortable this is to be a more accurate over this cpm right so that is what uh, the difference is and pert is a probability model and a cpm is deterministic model right so probability model means you know what is probability probability it is just chance right so it may or may not occur right so probability and the cpm is a deterministic model deterministic means right so this is having a, some uh, what you call base so probability is not having any base right so this deterministic models is having some briefs right so we can prove this right so but this probability model right so again it is just the uh, probability of occurrence right so it may or may not be there right so this is what the basic differences between the pert and cpm right so here the things you need to understand in the today's session are this one right so i first discussed about what is project planning right so next it is about the objectives right so why we need to have this right so what are all the objectives of uh, this project planning and need right so why we need a proper planning in place before executing the project and the next stage is the stages right so what are the different stages involved in the project planning right so i have discussed about all these phases which are involved in a project planning and what are all the different tools we have for project planning right so that is cpm which refers to critical path method pert which refers to program evaluation or the project evaluation and review technique and the work breakdown structure project documentation and gantt chart and we are concentrating only on the first two tools of planning a project that is cpm and pert right so first i discussed about the critical path method right so how this works right so how to identify this and next i took this pert right so what is program evaluation and review technique and what are the differences between the cpm and pert right so both these tools are used for the project management what is the clear difference between the cpm and pert right so i hope you understood the basics of the project planning right so next session right so i'll be taking on uh, tomorrow afternoon right so where i'll be discussing more on the monitoring right so project monitoring right uh, thank you for attending the session right so if you have any doubts regarding the today's presentation you can ask sir remaining project schedule sir yes yes that will be covered in uh, tomorrow session project schedule okay, okay. right so how it is done right so all these uh, the remaining topics whatever we have that will be covered under tomorrow's session right, so okay, okay. So thank you thank you uh, what are all the things i have covered from day 1 right so presentation this is third uh, day of presentation right so whatever i have uh, concluded in the last two sessions that will also be uh, i will just recall you uh, what are all the things we have discussed in the last two sessions and the scheduling topic whatever it is there right so i'll be covering it in the tomorrow's class any doubt regarding this okay so now we will end this session here and we will meet on tomorrow's session thank you for attending thank you thank you sir